It's time to answer that age old question that every parent asks themselves. How do we spend time together as a family without spending a lot of money? Hey, I'm Hope. And I'm Larry. From Under the Median. Listen, guys, we raised our sons debt free on an income which was consistently under the U.S. national average income. And we had a whole lot of fun with our kids. We did. So we are going to give you 40 different ways that we have spent time with our own kids that's a whole lot of fun and won't cost you a lot of money. All right, let's get started. The first thing is to listen to a great audio book. And hey, this is a great time to tell you all about Chirp. Chirp is the sponsor for today's video, and they are an audiobook company. What's the greatest thing about audiobooks, Larry? The amazing thing about audiobooks yes. is that you can multitask. While listening to an audiobook, you can be washing your car, yes. taking a hike, going for a bike ride, or taking a drive. That's right. And we were doing that this week. We were driving through the Smoky Mountains on our vacation, and we were listening to Captain America, which was a Chirp audio book. Now, one of the first things you think about when you hear audiobooks is it can be kind of expensive. And it can be if you've got monthly membership fees and you've got minimum numbers of books that you need to download, but Chirp is not like that at all. Yep, they offer amazing limited time audiobook deals. There are literally hundreds of audiobooks that are available for up to 95% off. And remember, no subscription fee, no monthly commitment fee, and it's easy to try out Chirp. Now, take a look at this book. I actually bought this book from Chirp and downloaded it. It's Silas Marner. It's one of the books that I read in high school literature class, and it had a profound impact on me. It's all about the importance of love, of giving of yourself to others, and of setting aside your interests for those who are really important to you. And it's all about how money does not bring you happiness. And Larry, we got a special deal just for our viewers, and it is... You can get your first audiobook from Chirp by using the promo code UNDERTHEMEDIAN5. You'll get $5 off your first book. That's right, and we're going to have that promo code and a special link in the description of this video. And moving on to number two in our list of 40 fun, free or frugal things you can do with your family this summer. This actually has to do with books as well. And we have done this as a family for many years and it is so much fun. And it is? Participate in a reading program. Now our local library has offered this. Uh, and has there been any, any other entity that's offered it besides our library? Oh, Barnes & Noble always offers okay. it. Um, you need to look online. There's actually several different ways that you can participate in summer reading programs. And they usually offer a perk if you've read the book. So if you read like three books, don't you get like an ice cream cone? Right. Or and then something? like if you do the whole seven weeks, we got um, we got ball tickets. We have a semi-pro uh team in town yeah. and the whole family went to watch them for free because we participated in the summer reading program at our local library. So mm -hmm. do you do that as a family? Are there summer reading programs that you participate in? Also, you know what? One of the things that I noticed like in the last couple of years is that the summer reading programs have started some of them to say that you can actually listen to audiobooks and that counts as part of your reading time. How about that? All so right. you can incorporate two things at once. Yeah, the third one. This also kind of goes with books, and we've done this. <laughs> and it can be a hoot. Okay, and it is? Act out your favorite scene from the book you've read. And this could mean creating props or costumes uh, for a little extra fun. Yeah, and when you get kids that are little and they, they like do impromptu lines, it's like what they remember the book scene as. You're like, really? Oh, yeah, that's, <laughs> that could be Okay, pretty, so pretty I'm funny. just saying that this, this is a really great thing to do as a family. All right, number four. You don't always have to do this in the spring, but yeah. typically you think of this activity with springtime things. Fly a kite. Let's go fly a kite. <laughs> okay, Mary Poppins. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Number five, you can fly something else too. This is like the new version of fly a kite. And you have to be kind of careful 
where and when you do this, okay? We're just gonna put that caveat out there, but you can do this, you can fly a... Fly a drone. All right, now. now. one of our sons uh, had a drone given to him at yeah. work, and so we took him out to this large field at a local mm -hmm. park. The field used to be used for flying model radio-controlled yeah. airplanes. And it was perfect. So he got his hand at flying the drone without getting it caught in a tree. And, okay, so here's why we say the caveat. Because there are certain areas where, like, if it's near airports or places like that, it's illegal to fly drones. So if you're going to do this... <laughs> Just remember we told you, you need to check and make sure it's legal where you're going to fly your drone. Um, but yeah, so our oldest son has had a couple of different drones. And they're harder to fly than you would think. Oh boy, they are. Well, I mean, anyway, for me, I'm not very good at eye-hand coordination, so <laughs> they actually didn't let me touch it. <laughs> they, they, they take some practice. Uh, the next activity that you can do is run through a sprinkler. And of course, the kids love to do this, but yeah, even adults can do that one. I love it. When I was a kid, that was, we would beg my mother to do that. Here's something else we have done. And I will tell you before we tell you what it is, I'm not very good at it. Okay, so it is? Uh, do chalk art on the sidewalk or your driveway. Yes, but see, you make it into a competition. So at like the chalk art competitions, they have little squares and each artist is in a square. So we did this and um, I just, look, there is, I'm going to see if Larry knows. There is only one thing that I draw very well. Do you know what it is? Snoopy. Yes, he knew. <laughs> it's because it's the only thing I can draw. So for the chalk art competition, everybody's creating these, you know, like scenes and stuff. And I have my little Snoopy in his doghouse. <laughs> Do you know when I took up when I took up the hobby of drawing? It was more like tracing. I had an opaque projector that would project a cartoon from a book onto a wall. I would tape the typing paper onto the wall and trace it. And Snoopy was the first character that I ever drew that way. This next thing I actually am pretty good at, and that is go someplace grassy, lie on your back, and look at the clouds. I'm really good at that one. Now, why is that a fun activity for you to do with your kids? Because you're thinking the kids are going to be going, what is this? You, the, the, the goal is to find like animal shapes in the clouds. So you're like, oh, that one looks like Dumbo, and that one looks like you know, whatever. So you got to find shapes in the clouds. But if you see one that looks like the tornado in the Wizard of Oz, <laughs> you, you probably should take shelter. That you should be concerned about. <laughs> <laughs> Visit the airport. This is harder than when, when our kids were young. When our older kids were really young, you could actually go to the airport. You take them inside. They could see the planes land. Not, not anymore. But um, you can still... You, so what, what people do now is they park a little ways from the airport, like you can still see the planes coming in and your kids can still experience that. Now, fortunately, we live about a mile from a small airport yeah. that gives uh, pilot piloting lessons. So I took our boys out to that airport and we sat just we've just parked outside the chain link fence and watched the planes land and take off it was really fun we weren't that far from the field either so we could see them really good and they have an open house like once a year they have a weekend where their air airport is open and you can go in and kind of tour and meet the pilots and stuff and so that adds yeah very really fun. fun to do too all right um now here this is a test for you to know how old you are, if you are of our vintage or not. Because I don't even know if kids do this anymore. Seriously, I don't. So the next thing is to play outdoor games. All right, Larry and I had this discussion before we started videotaping <laughs> of what we remember. And I'm like, you never played that? Okay, how many of you played red light, green light? Do you remember that? It's red light, green light, dynamite, boom. So you would form a line and people would like link hands. You would, you would link hands like this so that people couldn't get through. You're basically forming a, a barrier. And somebody from the other team, when you say red light, green light, dynamite, boom, they run and try to break that grip you have on the other person's hand. If they get through your wall, then then you're out. So, and you don't, you never played that? Mm -mm. We played army. We tried to blow each other up. So we, <laughs> we, 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 did the no! boom, we did the boom part. Oh my gosh. Uh, we, uh, we, uh, we did play, I see you have listed hide and seek. Hide and seek. Now, yeah, we, we did, did hide we and did seek. We did that one outside. Uh, we did flashlight hide and seek too. Did you guys do that after dark? Because you had a flashlight and so you had tried to find people. Yeah, we, we explored a local cave that was in oh, a, a local park. It was oh my really gosh. <laughs> uh, Mother May I, did you guys play that? So um, 
So you would you would say, Mother, may I do this or that? Okay. Is that, right. is that like so, Simon Says? Simon Says, yeah, it's like Simon Says. Oh, okay. Yep, okay. Simon Says. Simon Says was another one because I would always get, I would get, as you might imagine, really excited. <laughs> And I would forget whether she, they said Simon Says or not. So I was always out. I was always moving when I shouldn't be moving, which probably isn't surprising. <laughs> All right. So what other outdoor games? What did we miss? Old-fashioned outdoor games. We've got a couple more of them coming up. But tell us in the comments section, what would you play that maybe we missed? We're looking for good outdoor games. Uh, building sandcastles at the beach. If you're not near the beach, no worries. All you need is a sandbox. We weren't, we're not actually like super close to a beach, so our we kids, always had a sandbox. Uh, our kids spent endless hours oh in gosh, our yes. sandbox playing uh, all kinds of things and that. And I had a sandbox growing up until I put sand down the gas tank opening of our 1959 oh, oh Ford. That, that was the end of the sandbox, sadly. Oh, my heavens. <laughs> That's, um, I don't know if I've ever heard that story. I That's a honest. true story. Wow. <laughs> wow. Okay. Um. Visit a playground, and here is why this is a family activity. Guys, if you take your kids to the playground, put your phone away, and go play with them. When our kids were young, I mean, we would be all over the monkey bars and whatever, playing with them, and these other parents were like... <laughs> I was like, well, oh, they're yeah. not having yeah, a lot of we, fun. <laughs> we, would, we would swing with them and then go down the sliding board with them. And yeah, well, all, Larry all would swing stuff. with them. I have a little vertigo problem. So <laughs> <laughs> it was not, when mom started swinging, it was bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, uh, have a squirt gun fight. Uh, if you don't have a squirt gun, so we're always all about giving you alternatives. You don't have squirt guns. Then what we liked to use, which actually gave us far greater volume of water, was an, a squirt bottle that was that would like liquid detergent would come in or something. We clean it up real good and then put the water in that, and then you could really get people seriously wet from doing that. Um, then we can make your own version of an outdoor theater. I actually did this <laughs> with the kids. Uh, I had for a oh, about a year or so. I had a sixteen millimeter projector, and we took that out in the backyard, put up a slide screen because I, I still have slides. And we watched movies outside. Now, when I was a kid, we had a neighbor that just loved movies. And he would put a sheet over his garage door. And he, once again, he borrowed a 16 millimeter projector. And he showed us the music man outdoors. So we all brought popcorn. And I, I bet there was at least 25 people sitting in his driveway on a summer night watching that movie. It was so much fun. Much, much funner than watching it on TV on a little... Well, 21-inch screen is what we had back in those days. <laughs> so did people sing? Do you remember? Because I would sing. <laughs> I would be singing all the songs. I can't remember if we did or not. I, I didn't sing. I don't, I, don't, I don't think I knew. I didn't know the movie at that time. Now I probably would sing with it. All right, blow bubbles. Now, you need to blow bubbles, but you need to, like, say, who can blow the biggest bubble? Can you blow a double bubble? Double bubbles are hard because you blow a smaller bubble and then you wait for a second and then you start again and you blow another bubble and it encases the first bubble. It is really hard to do. I don't know. Do any of you know how to do it well? We, we had a backyard picnic one time at our house. We had several families in, and one of the families brought this this big ring. It was, it was probably oh, about eight huge. inches in diameter and, and it would make these huge bubbles. Uh, that was really fun. That they, they would just you had to swing it a certain way, and then you you develop a bu bubble about a foot in diameter. Okay, now so this is where we want to hear from you. We have yet to find. We buy the real the bubble stuff, guys. We buy like bubble solution because we have yet to find a homemade bubble solution that actually will blow bubbles like the store bought stuff. So if you know a recipe, please. Tell us. Uh, we've tried several of them and been not too successful with homemade bubble solution. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, play volleyball or badminton. Now, we never had like, you know, like the rich kids had the volleyball nets. We never had a volleyball <laughs> net. But we had a clothesline. Y'all, all you need is like a clothesline in your backyard or something that you can bat that volleyball or, or the badminton. We over. actually have a park in town that that leaves a volleyball net up all the time. Yeah, yeah. and it's so, free. So you, you, know, can, you have a park that's free. You can play. And it's on a it's on a sand uh, pad, mm -hmm. so it, mm -hmm. it's uh, it's really nice to, to use. 
there are a couple of free tennis courts in town too. So if you have those, it's a great way to get some exercise and um, practice your eye hand coordination. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, have an egg toss or an egg race. Now, y'all know we're vegan, so if we have one of these, <laughs> we have to go buy the eggs because they're not in my house, and we have to, like, uh -huh. use them up. So, uh, but I do think that actually having an egg race is that's good old-fashioned fun. Uh, now, what's this play balloon volleyball? What was that? Okay, so... I, I don't... I, that's, no, that wasn't well, a so part of... So, balloon volleyball is where you have a balloon and and you bat it in the air just like you would a volleyball but the goal is to see how many times you can pass it back and forth without it hitting the ground hmm. i just thought everybody did that you mm -mm. can do it with water balloons too because then you really don't want them but it's harder to bat them you know and then if they hit they splat yeah <laughs> okay so uh you have on here bounce a tennis ball or basketball together at home in the driveway or at a free public court. Yeah, we had, at one point, we had a whole bunch of tennis balls. I mean, we had a black lab golden retriever mix dog. And I know, so I know a lot of you are on the Team Larry Get a Dog. <laughs> um, and but so we always had tennis balls around for Shelby. But when the kids were young, they're like, I'm bored, which is a really, you don't want to say that to me. I find something for you to do. And so I would get a tennis ball out and we would just bounce the tennis ball you know, in the driveway or whatever, bounce it up against a wall, see how many times you could bounce it and then catch it. Mm -hmm. Good free fun. Hopscotch. That's another thing you can do at a, at a public playground, like at a school playground. Mm -hmm. uh, um, I, I, I don't know that I ever played hopscotch as a, as a kid. Uh, I, I was I was always exploring trails and bike riding and caves. stuff. So. And caves. Oh was, there was a cave we used to explore. <laughs> oh my word. Okay, just play catch. Find a ball, play catch. Yeah. Number 23, jump rope. Now, I don't know how many of you, it's been a while since you've jump roped. Jump rope involves far more cardio than I ever remember it involving as a child. Can I say that? I, I used to jump rope for hours when I was a kid. You know, I did too. I, I did. I, had, I, I, had a, I loved doing jump rope. It was fun. Yeah. <laughs> I've done it fairly recently with one of our boys. I'm like, holy cow, this is hard work. <laughs> yeah, I haven't done it as an adult. but uh, um, uh, Play a round of mini golf. Mm -hmm. Now, if you don't want to spend the money on a mini golf like course that's not very expensive, but um, I propose that you create your own obstacles in your backyard. Create, use whatever you have to create an, a mini golf obstacle course, and then and then figure out what constitutes, you know, like the hole where are you trying to get the ball to go, and play it in your own backyard. Uh, have a three-legged race. Now, I, you know, I've only done this once in my lifetime, but and I've never told you this story. Uh -oh. But we went to a Thresherman's reunion. Uh, it was in Pontiac, Illinois. And I participated in a three-legged race that had a reward. How'd you do? I did great. Our team won. Wow. And I, got, I won 75 cents. And I wanted to buy a Model T um, radiator cap that was on sale for 75 cents. My mom and dad wouldn't let me buy it. You guys, I have been married to a three-legged race winner for 33 years, <laughs> and I've not been aware of this. Oh, my gosh. How about that? All right. <laughs> New story. Um, play lawn game, uh, like croquettes or lawn darts. We had the most beautiful vintage croquette set, or croquet. I always heard of it as croquet. I know croquet set, mm -hmm. and it was it was just in wonderful condition. But our first house, like the yard, you guys, was the size of a potion stamp. I'm not joking. It was so tiny. So I mean, if by the time we got it set up, it'd be like, okay, hit the ball three feet. <laughs> I mean, it just <laughs> it wasn't the same. And we eventually sold it. But now we have a bigger backyard, and I kind of regret that well, we don't have we the might croquet build set the, anymore. Might be able to pick up one. Uh, I think that would be so um, much fun. A go for a nature walk or take along a list of items to try to find. Now, it, it's yeah. funny. I was just at our local nature center yeah. here in town, and they have a map that you can use. And within separate trails, mm -hmm. they have numbers 
uh, on certain scenic items and, and then they, you can get a, a document that will give a description of, of the highlights on the trail. I did not know this. Yes, yes. So you probably could find, you know, maybe that kind of an area in your local um, vicinity that would give you that kind of a, you know. Opportunity. So it makes yeah. it like a nature scavenger hunt, which I think is sort of great. Mm -hmm. um, play tag. Now, I tried to come up with a list of kinds of tag, right? So you got your regular tag. You got your freeze tag, right? And then you have your flashlight tag. Those were the three I came up with, unless Larry knows of any more different kinds of tag. And I'm willing to bet that some of you played different tag because I, I know there's other kinds of tag out there, but those are the three which I have played and we are familiar with. Mm -hmm. uh, catching fireflies. Uh, of course, you have to do this at dusk. Mm -hmm. And uh, in our area, there happened to be scads of fireflies out at night. And uh, I used to do that as a kid, of course, catching fireflies and releasing them. Very fun, very we fun thing. We begged my parents to let us stay out until it was dusk and the fireflies came out. Mm -hmm. Watch for falling stars. Now in our area, I know it's different in all kinds of different places in the world, but um, we have like in August, we have this event every year where there are lots of falling stars. Yeah, you can always get on the internet and do a search. Um, mm -hmm. there's, there's internet sites that will tell you when the best times are to view those. Usually there are times when I'm, I'm pretty much napped out, but, <laughs> but, but it is really fun to go out and get into an area that doesn't have a lot of light pollution mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. observe the, the meteors that are falling into the atmosphere. It's really fun. Tell shadow stories. So this is where like you guys, this was always my shadow thing. It looks like a duck. This was <laughs> <laughs> because we're like, let's tell, tell shadow stories. I was like, Mr. Duck. I I, that's about, you know, and this was a rabbit, right? So you get the rabbit and the duck. <laughs> and they were in the shadow stories. I My kids were always better at like, they could make dogs and all kinds of stuff with their hands. So you make the shadows on the wall and then you make them move and you tell shadow stories. Doesn't cost you a dime, guys. Okay. Uh, attend free community events and or concerts. There are so many things that you can go to right in your own area that will cost you nothing. Yeah, Hope's good at finding those too. Have a scavenger hunt. Now, when I was a kid and there was a scavenger hunt, you got a list of things and you broke into teams and you went around your neighborhood and like knocked on people's doors and said, hi, we're having a scavenger hunt. We're looking for this and that. It was always like diaper pens and stuff like that. If you guys are having a scavenger hunt, I actually still have diaper pens. I'm just letting you know. Uh, there were always there was a list of things you had to try to find from your friends and neighbors. Now I don't know if people still do this or not, uh, but my whole idea was you can actually have a scavenger hunt around your house, right? And say how many things on this list can we find around the house? And and you know what we would do? We'd say, oh, and when you find it, why don't you put it back where it belongs <laughs> instead of where you found it at? So scavenger hunts. All right, next thing. Good. We do that around the house a lot for your keys and glasses. <laughs> That's a totally different kind of hunt. I'm just letting you know. All right, the next thing I really like. Write and perform your own family song. Yeah, you make up a song about your family, and then you sing it. <laughs> um, it's fun. Write a play and act it out. Write your own play and act it out and, you know, Make sure that you are getting props and you're making like costumes and you have to videotape it. I'm, yeah, because mm -hmm. grandma and grandpa might want to see it. Go for a Sunday drive, even if it's not Sunday. Now, we did this as a kid. I did I too. Re I remember my dad yeah. would take us up the Illinois River on Route 29. It was a route that went right along the Rock mm -hmm. Island Railroad tracks. And, and that's the only thing that was between the river mm -hmm. and the highway. So it was a real pretty drive. And on a summer night, we'd have all the windows down in the car because we didn't have air conditioning. Mm -hmm. And we would take that little drive. It was always very fun. Yeah. Usually we ended up at the A&W root beer stand before we got back home. I was just going to say, I can't believe he said that. Because when we went on Sunday drives, that was the big thing. Because not all the time, but every once in a while, mom and dad would stop at A&W at the end of the Sunday drive. And we would get, I mean, 
we never spent a lot of money. So they had little baby root beer mugs. Oh, I've got one. Yeah, they I've were like, um, people use them for toothpick holders now, guys. Yeah. That's how little they are. Right, right. And and we would each, each of the kids would get a baby mug of root beer and mom and dad would get a bigger mug of root beer. <laughs> that, that was a huge, huge thing for us because we never, like we lived in a town of 1,800 people. Well, there today, were no uh, or, I guess the, so equivalent, thing. the equivalent today would be a Sonic drive-in. There's a lot of those yeah, around. Yeah, there you go. We passed a lot of them on our trip. Um, go fishing. Just go fishing. My dad uh, loved to fish and he had he had a time where he took each of us kids one by one. He didn't take all four of us at once. He would take us one by one out fishing and teach us to fish. So I could bait my own hook and reel in my own I caught a fish. turtle one time, a painted mm -hmm. turtle over our local... Really? Yeah. Did I, you catch fish? Uh, I did catch one fish. I caught a catfish one time. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm not a fisherman, so it's not, <laughs> not been on my, <laughs> my radar. But for those that are, uh, catch us some trout and send them our way. There you go. <laughs> all right. Uh, go swimming or wading. Find yourself a creek and go wading, all right? Sometimes you have to be careful. If you don't know the creek, though, you might want to wear shoes, tennis shoes, because, you know, you don't want to get your foot cut on glass on the bottom of the, mm -hmm. the creek or anything. But we had, my, my grandparents uh, built their, their retirement cabin on, um, on spring, at Spring Lake, and, um, and we would go to the old swimming hole all the time. Oh, yeah. Yep. Uh, walk along a, a waterfront or near a pond or a stream. Uh, once again, we're, we live along a, a river, and there's a really nice walkway along that river. It's very pleasant to, to uh, uh, take a little stroll along there. And Larry loves this next one. This was his... This was his favorite. Get ready for Larry's favorite. Ready? This was Larry's favorite. Well, <laughs> Free or frugal thing to do. Go ahead, Larry. Tell uh, him. No, go to a neighborhood garage sale <laughs> and everyone gets five dollars to spend. That means me too. I get five dollars. <laughs> yes, My yes. gosh. Of your very own. Wow. Hey, if you liked that list of 40 free or frugal things to do with your family, we actually did another video very similar to this where we gave 40 other ideas. These were new ideas that I don't think we talked about in the first video. So if you want 40 more free or frugal things to do with your family, I'm gonna put a link to that video up above and I'll put a link to it in the description of this video video. We want to remind you before we take off today, the sponsor for tonight's video was Chirp and you get $5 off your first book with them and the uh, code, the promo code will be under the median five. You will find that promo code and a special link in the description of this video. Make sure you give it a thumbs up, a like, tell us in the comments, what do you like to do with your family? We actually have more ideas that we didn't get to. We have 20 more ideas on top, ready to go for another video. And we'd love to know what do you do that is fun, free or frugal with your family. And maybe we'll give you a shout out when we do the next fun, free or frugal video. <laughs> Sorry, I lost my place. <laughs> watch for falling. Okay. Watch for, okay. Wait, can we back up here to have a scavenger hunt? We just did that one. No, can we back it up? Because a scavenger hunt really is where you go. Um, you want to do it over? Yes. She's just going to do this one over. I'm going to let the camera roll. Thanks. Welcome. Hey, if you like that list of four go, of, uh, hey, if you... <laughs> <laughs> What'd you say? A forgo? A forgo? If you forgo. like that list, a forgo. <laughs> okay. Hey, Dots, quit laughing. I can't do this if you're laughing. Okay. The slate on the far left belonged to my father. He started using this probably about 1926 and has his initials at the top. The camera on the right is identical to my dad's first camera. It was a 50th anniversary Kodak 120 was brought out in 1930 and the truck and the tractor toys belonged to my mother when she was a child. Mm -hmm.